Hello, my friends. Brett Patterson coming at you from the financial capital of the West, the land bountiful. The land bountiful. No longer Salt Lake City. We're in the land bountiful, Brian. It's nice to be in bountiful. It's great to be in bountiful. Just 10 minutes north of Salt Lake. Yeah. Maybe five, seven? About seven, yeah. About seven minutes. If you're on I-15, yeah. Anyway, great to be here today. We've got a great, three great topics that... Um, I think they're great yeah. that we want to discuss. But before we jump in and hit these three things, let's talk performance of the market so far this year. I've got some good news for performance. I'm going to do the good news last. Okay. okay? S&P 500 year to date up 16.7%. It is 1.7% off of its all-time high. Okay. So it was down 6-7%. You know, a little while ago, off of its all-time high, it's rebounded slightly off its all-time high. The NASDAQ up 14.71. So the NASDAQ's trailing the S&P 500. The NASDAQ is down almost 7% from its highs. Okay. So a little bit of a pullback. Yeah. So market's up. Good year. It's been a good year. Hey, it's been a good year. Yeah. Here's the good news. You ready? Okay. Bonds. Oh, bonds, yeah. Corporate bond index. It's positive it's on the po- year. Okay. <laughs> Plus 2.17%. That's good news. Does that make you happy? <laughs> that just makes me happy for anyone that loves bonds. <laughs> That's right. I would rather have the 14 or 16% return. Right. But bond lovers out there, you're positive. And that's good. Yeah. Right? Yeah, rates have been coming down a little bit. That's put uh, upward pressure on bond prices. They work inversely, as oh. we all probably know, heard before. Now, it's still not a positive real return on the year for bonds. Yeah. But we're heading in the right direction. Right. With inflation. What's inflation right now? Two and a half? Three? Uh, it's, yeah. Three? Between two and a half and three percent. I can't remember the exact number. Yeah. I think the latest one, just CPI, I think it was just... 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, something like that. Yeah. Um, but, okay. Yeah. So negative real return. Sorry. Yeah. That tells you how how often I look at market forecasts and, and macroeconomic data. Yeah. <laughs> Which I, uh, in, fa- in fact, speaking of that, the Fed has their meeting next week. Should lower should lower uh, rates by maybe a quarter is the the suggestion. That's but, the market expectation. Yeah. Is the Fed's going to lower rates and. We'll see. Yeah. To be determined. Yeah. All right. The three topics of the, of the day that I want to hit with you, brother. Okay. Gold. Yeah. I want to talk football. Love talking gold. Love talking football. Yeah. You, you like talking football more than gold. Probably more so. But we'll hit gold first. Yeah. And then I want to talk about an apocalypse. Oh, I don't like talking about that. We're going to anyway, brother. <laughs> okay. Gold. Gold has had a great year. Gold is up 31% year to date. That's good. Really good. That's a good year. Um, it's had a good three years, in fact. So, Brian, we've had, there's a lot of people talking about gold right now. We've talked about gold in the past as something we wouldn't invest in, but it's doing well right now. Yeah. Would you buy gold right here? Would you well, ever buy gold? What, what, how was it doing three years ago? Probably coming off, hey, but co- sh- probably coming off of a recency bias. You know, I'm recency biased. Right. Yeah. It's up 31 percent this year. That's not the time to. I mean, in my opinion, it's not the time to buy gold. Okay. You know, is there ever a time to buy gold? I, I there's a lot of other. It's way down my list on pri, in the priority of what I would want to buy or what to own. Okay. You know, gold is way down there, and. Uh, so I would much rather own a good business. Uh, I'd much rather rather own a good piece of real estate, you know, commercial real estate, land, a real asset. You know, I look at gold as is. Uh, it's a. I guess you could say it's a, a store of value. I mean, it's always had some value. Yeah. And, and, Since the beginning of time. And I think people yeah. often reference that gold has always appreciated over time, over the long term, and it's always represented some value. There's always some demand for gold. With that said, there's a lot of other assets that I think are more attractive than gold. Yeah. So gold is way down the list. Okay, so let's go to the appreciation standpoint, right? I saw these statistics. These are the numbers. Gold since 1980 is up 3.1 times. Okay. okay. The CPI, 
So we're often told that gold is the, the greatest inflation hedge. You know, buy gold, hyperinflation, inflation, you know, it's going to do better. The CPI, which is a measurement of inflation, up four times. Okay. So gold hasn't even kept up, kept pace with inflation. Right. Since 1980. The S&P 500, up 49 times. Yeah. That's telling the story that you're talking about. It, it seems like it's not even close. <laughs> it's not. So I went back and I said, forget 1980. Right, that's in the midst of chaos. Yeah, in high inflation, and everything else. Let's go back three years, <laughs> <laughs> meaning three more years. Nineteen seventy-seven. I picked my birthday. Okay, and I'm like, come on, gold's got to be doing pretty good since my birthday, with yeah. all the craziness of the '80s and uh, and all that kind of stuff. And it has it. It's up five hundred and ninety-nine percent. No, that's pretty good. It's really good. The S and P five hundred. Up 3,190%. Wow. So why does the market do better than gold? And why would you say gold's down on the list of priorities? Like, why does the market do better? Well, gold is not a producing asset. It's a piece of metal. People put value on that metal. But it doesn't, it doesn't produce anything. It, it just sits there. It looks nice. But it's there's, heavy. It's heavy. <laughs> But there's no risk. It's not an asset that actually produces revenue, income. And so the value of gold is just what what uh, the current market is, what people are willing to pay for gold. And, and uh, that can change. But over time, gold has appreciated and, and been a, I guess you could say it's it's a store of value. It's, it's, it's a store of value. Right. And I think people often look at uh, gold as doomsday, you know, hey, if everything else goes to heck, I can at least at least have my gold. You know, that's at least that's going to be here. Yeah. That's not going to. Which know, we'll talk about disappear. when we talk about the apocalypse, right? We'll come back to gold in that way. Yeah. But the number one reason why we wouldn't buy gold for clients is because it's an asset that doesn't produce anything. Yeah, it's it's not a producing asset. I mean, there's a lot. land produces. Uh, a, a rental of, unit produces a business, a know, business that generates which is revenue that three thousand one hundred ninety percent return since nineteen seventy seven. That produces the you know earnings, right? Profits and yeah, yeah. So that would be the number one reason why you wouldn't buy gold. Doesn't I mean anything. that would be the reason why gold is way way down my list okay. as far as what I'd want to buy. Okay, it's uh, had a great year. Yeah, I own a little bit of gold that I've inherited from my grandmother and. uh Thank you, gra grandmother. Yeah, but uh, I own a ton of silver I got from my grandpa. Sark. A ton? That's a lot. Well, not a ton. <laughs> Come on, bro. Not a ton. That would be a lot of silver. That would be a lot of silver. I I inherited some gold coins and some little silver bars that my grandpa Sark yeah bought in case of something we're going to talk about in a minute. Football. Grandpa Sark's football guy. Yeah, he's a football guy. He's a football guy. So gold hit an all time high. Ignore it is what we're telling people. Well, you don't want to buy – even if you like gold, even if we like gold, it, typically you don't want to buy at all-time highs, you know, the gold at all. That's yeah. not likely the best timing. But yeah. Agreed. I, I had Our, a, I've, and it's interesting because it seems like every time gold is doing well, what do we get? We get calls. For about gold. Yeah. yeah. We get calls about gold. What do you because think about when gold does well, commercials, radio spots, all these things – Increase talking about the performance, right? All time high, right? When it's really not a great investment, it is a store of value, just right. like you said. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's talk football. Okay, we had a podcast. Spencer and I did a podcast. We missed you. Yeah, and we talked about the importance of liquidity. Okay? Right after we released that podcast, the NFL, the National Football League, came out and they said owners voted. And the owners voted, we can sell up to 10% of our franchise mm -hmm. of the team to private equity. And Robert Kraft, who owns the Patriots, I think it's the second or third most valuable NFL team. Behind the Cowboys. Yeah, behind the Cowboys for sure. They're the first. I think, is the Packers probably second? I would bet. I, I, it's, yeah, somewhere like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But Robert Kraft came on CNBC and he said, hey, I need cash. 
So that's the reason we're giving 10% of the value of our franchise to private equity and allowing them to buy it. Because this asset, this New England Patriots asset is illiquid. Yeah. And I don't feel bad for Robert Kraft because he's worth a lot of money. Yeah. But he can't get the money. Right. Which is why they brought in private, capital, private equity. Yeah. So tell me, Spencer and I talked about it. Give me your thoughts on liquidity and the importance of liquidity when investing. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's uh, liquidity is important. I think everybody, I think, needs some liquidity at times. And uh, that's the beautiful thing about uh, f public financial markets is we have lots of liquidity. Mm -hmm. and on the flip side, that liquidity sometimes makes it too easy to sell. And people take people, because it is easy to sell, they, they, probably more active than they should be as far as buying and selling. Yeah. Um, Which creates the opportunity right. to buy at cheaper prices, right. right? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I think liquidity is great. Um, everybody needs it from, you know, at times. And uh, it's great to have liquidity. It's great that, you know, we're in a business that we always have liquidity. Pretty much with every investment that we recommend to our clients, uh, we can – you know, ninety nine percent of all the investments we have our clients in and are liquid. You know, we could sell it today and it's liquid tomorrow or the next day. Don't underestimate the value of that liquidity in your investments. Yeah. Again, reiterating that. That's why these NFL owners are giving private equity the right to ten percent. Yeah. Because they need the cash. Yeah. Now, what what are what's private equity going to do with it? I mean, they're going to have an illiquid asset when they own it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. It is illiquid. No, no they've doubt. got it. Yeah. They've got to have a share of of revenues off of that ten percent ownership. That's what they'll get. I'm sure. Yeah, they'll get. Um, but the bulk of that investment, which is the ownership itself and the value of the team, that's still illiquid. Right. So they'll get some cash flows. Yeah. All right. Third thing. Okay. Did you know there's an apocalypse coming? <laughs> well, it seems like, in fact, there's always an ap apocalypse coming. It's, yeah, but this one's real, Brian. Yeah, okay. Because there's an election coming up. Mm -hmm. And if you talk to any left-leaning that is actually going for Kamala mm -hmm. and Waltz, you ask them if Trump wins, this country's done. Like. Get in your bunker and brace for impact. Yeah. Then if you ask a far right person about about the other party, mm -hmm. same thing. Yep. Now the far right will probably have more ammo and guns as they go in their bunkers <laughs> than the far left. But it's an apocalypse either way you slice. It. Yeah. How do you prepare for that apocalypse? Is the question. I mean, we've we've heard this story over and over. Brett, you and I have been working together over a decade now. I've we've talked about we talk about this every four years. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like I it, know. It, I remember the last time we talked about this. And four why years do ago. we talk it's about it every years four years? Every time, every two years because there's midterms too. Every time it's an apocalypse, apocalypse yeah. coming. Every time. Yes. I mean, it doesn't it's without fail. So, folks. Relax. It's not an apocalypse. Okay. <laughs> For people that can't relax, right? They have their net worth and, and we're managing it and we've got it in the businesses that we love and it's been doing well, mm -hmm. but they're freaking out and they can't sleep. Do you say, hey, buy the first topic, which is gold? Well, and relax? Buffett like, says, what would you do? Yeah. I mean, I heard Buffett to help those people. Yeah. This Buffett said, uh, I heard him say this on CNBC, Becky Quick was interviewing him and he said, you know, if you're going to do, he said S stupid things uh, with stocks, then you probably shouldn't own stocks. And she says, what is it? What is a stupid thing? And she says, well, when stocks, you're selling stocks when they go down or because they go down. I mean, that's, that's really, so it, if you're likely to, you know, if Trump wins or Harris wins, um and and you're likely to sell because one of them wins and it's not it's not what you wanted and you probably yeah. shouldn't own stocks you probably <laughs> i mean yeah if, because i just think that's i don't think that's the right thing to do there may be a temporary decline or bump depending on who wins who who knows but 
I always think about it in terms, I kind of boil it down to the right to, you know, looking at the company as opposed to you. people try to, they look at this big market and they see these big moves and it, it's hard to, it's hard to understand why markets go up and down. What Like yesterday is crazy. Yesterday, the market goes down at first, then it turned around and rebounded. And rally. It rally. Huge and, rally. And it's like- Like two and a half percent rally. But why? Why did it do that? <laughs> More buyers than sellers. I know, but we don't we don't know why. Yeah, yeah, you know, we don't yeah. know why all of a sudden buyers started coming in and the market turned around and within hours, you know, and and yeah. ended up being in a positive day. So I know the headline. Yes, yes, you're right. Right. You know, they could it could have been about something about Nvidia or chips or Apple. Jensen started talking and everybody loved what he was saying, so <laughs> the market went up. Yeah. So I mean, I think about you know owning a great business is. Apple going to be a worse business or be harmed or damaged because one party wins over the other. I mean, there might be some small effect, but I, I don't, I don't think so. I, I think focus on the business, focus on, focus on fundamentals. What happens in Washington? We, we always over estimate how important you know washington is on our investments i'm not saying that's not important that there's no impact on our investments but it's it's fairly minimal yeah <clears throat> yeah i'm a i'm a numbers guy i'm just hey show me the probabilities right yeah and and i don't worry about the fear mongering tactics it's to me what's the probability that an apocalypse that this country is going to fail if one person wins or another 0.05. I mean, it's really low. Okay, so if somebody, it's so low that I would do nothing it's, to to man differently with my wealth. Yeah. So low. But if someone is so nervous about that 0.05 percent probability, which probably isn't even 0.05 percent. Oh, it's lower than that. It's even lower than that. Yeah. But let's say 0.05 percent. You know what? Go buy 0.05 percent of your net worth in gold. Yeah. Or in canned foods or bitcoin bitcoin or if you're on the right the right leaning side more ammo or whatever pet right? rock a pet rock a pet rock what is the pet rock that's the that's kind of the gold yeah it's kind it's of your gold. pet rock anyway go just just go by so you can just sleep yeah as long as it doesn't do damage to your long-term plan which is based on a lot higher probabilities than a coming apocalypse. There's, I think, there's a very high probability that great businesses today will likely be very good businesses five years from now, ten years from now. Not, not all businesses. All I the, mean, there's going to be failures yeah. along the way, even in our portfolio, for sure. There'll be failures the along bulk. the way. Yep. Right. And one thing I, I think it's important for people to understand is on CNBC or the news, Wall Street Journal, whatever, whatever financial. Uh, channel or newspaper, magazine, whatever you listen to, um, they often interview people who are, you know, they're that create interest, and people that create interest are usually doom and gloom. And that people always tune in. Oh, you hear what this guy said? They're tuning into the doom and gloom, no. or you know, the extreme views. Can I throw one at you right now? And those views generally are very low probability. So here's one right now that I want to talk about. This yeah. is a coming apocalypse. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to ask you, how would Apple, Amazon, um, American Express deal with this apocalyptic situation? Okay. The U.S. loses its reserve currency status in the world. How would those companies, any good company, deal with that <laughs> well they would change you know they would they would pivot or change the way they you know had they had to do they need to do business i mean they would they would navigate that challenge you know these are good if you if the united states lost its reserve currency status i mean these businesses are still going to be around they're still going to be i still think be very good businesses it's interesting. It'll, it'll it will be interesting to see if that ever happens. Again, it's a very very low probability yeah. that that's that's going to happen in anytime soon. Um, you know, for example, for what would be what would replace it? What would replace it? Would it be the Chinese 
you know, yuan or yuan, yuan or the Russian ruble or the South Korean. I don't know. I mean, but that's it's something that's getting a lot of headlines, and there's countries trading, you know, stuff. commodities that are not in dollars anymore. Yeah. But I guess my point is the best companies in the world that people own in their portfolios, they will adjust. Oh, yeah. They'll adjust. They'll, they'll have, they have the best and the brightest managing currency fluctuations for them, and they will adjust appropriately. Right. I mean, that's how, that's why these businesses are so great. The world reserve currency essentially just means that globally, you know, when we trade, we trade in dollars. Yeah. <laughs> So if we trade in another currency, I don't think that's the end of the world. I no. really, I really don't. You so, don't? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't think that's the end of the world for Apple. You're not buying any gold or then. Amazon or American Express. I'm not. I'm not buying any gold. No, hmm. no. And just you know the the doom and gloom and the that you see on uh, in the media. Just know that most of the time these. These scenarios that these people paint that look so negative is very low probability, and you should really ignore it. Right. We often get, you know, a forwarded email from a client saying, "Hey, what would you think about this guy? He's been well, ninety nine percent of the time. I've we've heard of the guy, and he's been saying that for twenty five years. He's you know broken clocks, tw oh, you know, right twice a day, or you know, he's just yeah, you know. yep." All right. Well, I feel much better now. Oh, good. I'm going to be able to sleep tonight, which is good. Uh, there is gold football. Speaking of football, big in-state rivalry game this week. Yeah. Right? Utah State, Utah, up in the uh, land of Logan where Spencer resides. The, the Aggies versus the Utes. and, and uh, You'll be up there. I'm an Aggie. I'm going up I'm there. I'm going to be at the game. I'm an Aggie. and I, I might have red on. I'm going to root. For, yeah, you might have. I'm going to root for the Aggies, although I, it's going to be a tough game. The, U, the Utah looks very good. Well, they don't have their starting quarterback. Yeah, we're we're i think we're struggling but uh, hey yeah. we just love football yeah and an apocalypse <laughs> it doesn't come true it doesn't come true yeah because they very rarely yeah do, yeah if ever yeah with that my friends thanks for joining us today until next time bye now <laughs>